From the moment they're built, the countdown begins. How long can a skyscraper stand before it must make way for the new? Time was up for the AMP Centre, one of Sydney's oldest and tallest skyscrapers. We had an ageing 40-storey tower that had uh, a leaky facade. It had inefficient uh, mechanical systems. Like, what do you do with this thing? Developer Dexus decided it deserved a second chance. Rather than demolition, the building was stripped to its bones. Two-thirds of the structure, slabs and beams were kept, along with 95% of its core. And then a new building, known as Key Quarter, was constructed on top of that skeleton. Concrete and steel are probably the, the most uh, carbon intensive um, elements. And so by doing that, we have uh, reduced 12,000 tonnes of embodied carbon and also save $130 million in construction costs. Those behind Key Quarter hope it provides a roadmap for how to build better. Redesigning our cities isn't easy, but climate-conscious planners want to shake up the status quo. This 12-storey apartment block perched on an old hotel in Melbourne was built just five years ago. Now it's facing the wrecking ball. We should be building buildings to last, buildings that will stand the test of time, not creating buildings which are disposable. Buildings account for 66% of the emissions in the city of Melbourne. It's a similar story for other big cities around Australia. So if we're serious about meeting our national carbon reduction targets, as a city, as a state, as a country, then we need to get serious about buildings. What we choose to build today will define our tomorrow. Lachlan Bennett, ABC News.